I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm changing my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. And I say, Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down. Joy of the Lord. Oh, yeah. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. And I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And amen. Oh, yeah. I'm changing my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. Yeah. And I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Trading my sickness, and I'm trading my pain, and I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Oh, and I say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, 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 Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes. Yes, Lord, amen. That is it. I'm down the persecutor. It's a part of other times. You know the words that? So what? Joy of the Lord. Yeah. And I'm trading my sickness. And I'm trading my pain. And I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Oh. And I say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Lord, yes. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, oh. yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. that song from 19 uh, <laughs> remember that's the old isn't it <laughs> oh that's going way back I woke up this morning I was sitting I was like oh okay I got I got it say it again yes I 
lying down, look turns so cute. And uh, there's a pen and yeah, this verse I can't remember. Yeah. Anyway, I love that. But this is this is one of ours. I've been singing for a while, so. If you don't sing the right key, that sounds. Your love is an all-consuming fire. It's raging deeply inside of my heart. It's burning away everything that is not like you. And your grace is all sufficient. You're pouring your goodness and mercy into my life. And it won't stop until I'm more like you. Oh, 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 oh. Your love is an all-consuming fire It's raging deeply inside of my heart And burning away everything that is not like you And your grace is all stuff You're pouring your goodness and mercy into my life And it won't stop on until I'm all like you And in a pillar of fire by night You call my name And like Moses I answer And you took the fire And you put it on the inside And you took the fire, Lord And you put it on the inside Oh, please take the fire, Lord Consuming fire, it's raging deeply inside of my heart and burning away everything that's not like you. Every day and every night, Lord, and your grace is all. Jesus, you're pouring your goodness and mercy, Lord, into my life, and it won't stop until I'm more like you. Oh, I'm telling you now that you got love is an all consuming fire. Raging deeply inside of my heart And burning away everything that's not like you Oh, and your grace is all sufficient You're pouring your goodness and mercy, Lord, into my life And it won't stop until I'm more like you And it won't stop into my life and it won't stop until I'm more like you wanna say it again all my life you have been watching over me Lord you've been a cloud by day you've been a pillar of fire by night when you called my name like Moses I answered You put it on the inside, oh yeah, yeah, and you took the fire, and Lord, you put it on Jesus, yeah, 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 and you took the fire, and Lord, you put it on the inside, and your love is an all-consuming fire, it's raging deeply inside of my heart, and burning away everything. Not like you each and every day, Lord, and your grace is all stuff. You have been pouring such goodness and mercy into my life, and it won't stop until I'm more like you. God, your love is an all consuming fire, burning deeply inside.
inside my heart Burning away everything It's not like you In your grace is also Jesus peeping It's not gonna stop Until I'm more like You gotta love God, you gotta love God. I like that part that says, and it's not gonna stop till I'm more like you. Amen. Isn't that good? <laughs> God's promises are sure. That's why. I love you, Lord. Tell him. And I lift my voice. Hey, Tammy. You talking? To worship you, oh my, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what? In what you have, let it be a sweet, sweet song. sing a song. I was dreaming a song. I dream these songs. I forget. <laughs> Whatever the cost. <laughs> Keep forgetting. But Sister Sifa had a dream and Sister Sifa's dream said, what did the dream say? They're walking from far to find church, but they're all different churches and they don't know what church to go to. And her son says to her, there's some songs that only our church sings. And if you hear that song, <laughs> that's a cool dream. And she gets the name of the song right. If she got, if she got a song that we didn't write, it's like, okay, that was, that was marshmallows, but. What's the song go again? This is, this is, um, this is now, well, this is another song dedicated to Jacob. <laughs> because Jacob ran away from home to get to church. So if I think, anytime you know what I'm thinking it for. If you run, Lord, I'll run after you. If you hide, Lord, I'll seek after you. Jacob said, where you are. He said, I want to be there too. And if you run along, you're going to find me running after you. He said, if you lead me, I'm going to follow after you. If you call me, Jacob said, I'm going to come on to you. Draw Because where you are, there, Lord, I want to be there too. Jacob said, if you're ever Lord, you're going to find me running after you. Here I come, I'm running every day. I'm, don't try to stop me, I'm running. I want to keep on running after you, hey, Lord, because where you If you 
tight, Lord. I'll seek after you. He said, where you are, that's where I want to be there too. And if you run, Lord, you're going to find me. I know you lead me. I'm going to follow after you. I hear you call me, Jacob said, so I'm going to come. He came running. You know why? Cause where you are, Jesus, he just wanna be there too. Hey, and if you run a lot, you're gonna find me running. Hey, because where you are, I wanna be there too. So please don't run Lord. Cause you're gonna find me. When you sing a song, you think of somebody. I'm thinking of Jacob. <laughs> That's not right. Like, boom. <laughs> hey, Lord, until this church is finished and you take it home, I'm going to talk about that boy. Because <laughs> no one does that. Hey, that's a badge of honor in my, in my world. That's a badge of honor. Stick it on my chest. <laughs> Who comes running after God like that? You ain't seen nobody run after God like that. You get beat up when you to become a Christian from Muslim? Easy route, man. Nobody stops you. See, what was that song again, Siva? These are songs of Zion. Only the Holy Ghost give these songs. I have said to Lord, He's always before me. Because He that my right hand, I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. Oh, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad. My flesh and loss rest in hope. Yeah, my flesh and loss rest in hope. Oh, because you have shown me the path of life. Yes, you have shown me the path of life. You have shown. Of a lie. I have said the Lord He's always before me And because He's at my right hand I shall not be moved I shall not be moved I shall not be moved Therefore my heart is glad And my glory rejoices rest in hope Jesus when I die my flesh and loss rest in hope cause I know one thing you have shown me the path of life help me to walk on the Lord cause you have shown me the path of life you have shown me the path of life Oh, God has shown me the path of 
fly In your presence There is fullness of joy That you ride and lay them There are treasures forevermore And in God's presence Tell the boy There is fullness of joy Yeah, yeah, there is ride and yeah, yeah There are treasures forevermore Be the path of my Someone say, Lord, you have shown me the path of life. You have shown me the path of life. God has shown me the path of life. Help me to walk on the Lord. Help us to walk on the Lord. For the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. And I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid because the Lord is my life. The Lord is my life. The Lord is my life. The Lord is my life and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is my life and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. So I will. I'm finished light worship time. I'm in the song. It goes like this. Uh, it was a really cool melodic sound. It goes, How much to know you, Jesus? How much to know? And how much to know you? And what will it cost? How much to know you, Jesus? How much to know you and what will it cost? How much to know? How much to know? How much to know you, Lord? What will it cost? Please show me, Lord, how much to know you. How much to know? How much to know you and what will it cost? How much to know? You, Jesus, how much to know you and what will it cost? How much to know you, my Jesus? See for say, how much to know God and see for what will it cost you? God wants to know how much to know you, how much to know you. How much to know you and Lord, what will it cost? That's, good. That's a good question, isn't it? Brother Regan, how much to know God? How much to know him? Yeah. How much to know him? What will it cost? <laughs> Tremaine, God wants to know. How much to know you, Jesus? Gotta ask him. Well, a rich man came to Christ, he said, he said, Lord, I want to, I want to get eternal life. And, and what's it going to cost? He said, sell everything you have. <laughs> everything you have. Give it to the poor. I might make that a verse. I only got the chorus. The chorus is how much you know. But that's, what's it going to cost? It's gonna, you have to get rid of everything you have. And uh, give it to the poor and come follow me. The guy said, I can't pay that. 
And the song says, How much to know you, Jesus. How much to know you, Lord, and what will it cost? I want to know how much to know you. How much to know you? How much to know you, Lord, and what will it cost? <laughs> Isn't this what I mean? What will it cost? You don't know when you, you, don't know when you, when you first come to God, you know what it's going to cost you. You just know you're willing to pay the price, right? You don't know what it's going to cost you. But when you come to him and you realize, oh, it's going to cost me that. Because sometimes God don't negotiate with you. He just says, come. <laughs> God said, I will show Paul how much great things he has to suffer for my name. He didn't tell him right away, you know. Paul said, man, I am being beaten up like I'm fighting against the beast of Ephesus, but um, that's, what it's, that's what it's going to cost him. And ultimately, it cost all of the apostles their lives. We know, we know it cost John his life on the Isle of Patmos. We know all the disciples. Um, they perish for his name as well. You brought a friend. What's your friend's name? Michelle. Hi, Michelle. I want to give Michelle. It is good to see you in church tonight. All you young people, we always love having you in church. Um, God is good to us. And he's blessed us this day. We don't have to be here. We can be in the world doing whatever we want to do. We're only here because God said be here. We can go live how we want to live. In. But if God puts it in your heart to be in his house and to worship him, what a blessing. Brother Caleb, you can be anywhere you want to be, but you're in God's house tonight. You only visit, you have to even come tonight, but we, it's still good to have you in God's house. And good, you're just a visitor now, okay? So, you get, you get treated like a visitor for that reason. We're in John chapter 4, talking about the goodness of our God. First John, thank you, Tammy. He's about to make a very bold statement. Tammy, you know what he said? And I think I have the Holy Ghost. Can you find out with me? And I think I have the Holy Ghost. Yeah? John, the, the apostles, the apostles were given a job by the Lord Jesus Christ. Their job was to define for us. Their job was to turn what Christ said into doctrine. Their job was to interpret what he is saying. Their job was to understand what he's saying and turn it into doctrine. Go ye therefore and baptize all nations. I'm going to get there a second. Oh, in the name of the Father and the Holy Ghost. That's what he said, right? What did they do? They went forth and they baptized all nations in the name of Jesus. So Christ says one thing and their job is to interpret it. It is their job to be interpreters of it. It was their opinion. <laughs> I think that's what he meant, they said. I think that's what he meant. I was there and I heard him say, Go ye therefore and baptize all nations in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Well, you know what he meant by that? He actually meant in the name of Jesus. <laughs> well, who are you? Who are you? Because that's what the religious world acts right now. Who are the apostles to establish doctrine? Who are they? What right do they have more than us? The fathers, Tertullian, Clement, we're also fathers. Are you? And so he says again, I'm going to read from verses 1 again. He says, Beloved, believe not every spirit. Try the spirits. We began not by saying religious spirits, but your own spirits. Whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone into the world. Hereby know you the spirit of God. Every, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is coming flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Christ is come in flesh is not of God. I like how they just, they just made it so simple. If someone says that Christ is come in the, in the flesh, they have the right opinion. If they say Christ has not come in flesh, they have the wrong opinion. And the question is, who are you to tell us what opinion to believe? And they're going to tell you the second here. He says, and every, and every spirit that, that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, uh, whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. He says, you are of God. 
Everybody, turn to somebody and say, you're of God. <laughs> you're of God. Why do I say that? Here is how, how do you know you're of God? You're of God and have overcome them. Overcome who? You have overcome the lies that's in the world. Listen to me. Um, uh, <laughs> please forgive my facetious behavior. I, I, am, I am sometimes a bit tricky. Um, on, 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 on Sunday, we had two groups of new people that were here. There was two sitting where um, Jumba and, um, and Brother Jordan is. And uh, there were two more that were sitting there. And uh, two new people, a man and his wife. And uh, I preached the gospel. And, and in the middle of it, I just threw out the word Trinity and threw out the word Jesus is God. And if you don't, if you believe he's Father, and I'm, I am... I am throwing out there with reckless. Of, you guys know I'm very careful. I always tell you guys. I always tell you guys. Don't go saying doctrine in church because what? It's my job, and it might what? Offend. And so in that moment, guess what I'm doing? I am offending. I am. I am intentionally being offensive. I want to offend you. I want to try your spirit. I want to preach some truth. And if you're not of God, you can't stand there. <laughs> you're not of God. You're not of God. You can't sit. You can't sit there because everybody around you is going, "Amen, brother. Amen." You're like, "Wait, wait a minute. Y'all don't believe that?" No, no, we don't believe that. So, if I'm preaching truth and you're not of God, guess what you're going to do? You're going to get up and walk out. Always do. You ever notice that? If I, want to, if I want to take my time, sometimes I would take my time with people and no one says anything for two, three months. Let me gently lead them to where this was. No, uh, uh, no, no, no. Don't take, don't say it. But on this occasion, uh, I'm going to say it because I, I want to offend. And of course, you know, what we think would happen does happen. And, you know, I'm going to come back again and say, you know what, let's give it another shot. Yeah, go on. I'm going to preach it again. <laughs> Maybe this time say maybe I should have tried on the, maybe the ears are on block and said you know that's that's important what the guy's saying. But there's another couple that was there, say where Sister Belinda is, and that's the first time they've come to church. And something in their spirit says, you know what? I like this. And so after church, the young man came up to me and said, Pastor Robert, when am I gonna get baptized in Jesus' name? He said, my wife isn't ready, but that's okay. Everybody work out their own salvation, fair trembling. I, I'm, I'm ready to get baptized. I, I, gotta, I gotta do the right thing. I need, to be, I need to be baptized in Jesus' name. You know, we know God's working in, in this hour. And you know, Brother Regan and I, and myself, we sat down, we talked to him for a while and everything. And um, now we talked about the Godhead and through these, the very thing that would offend some people, it's, it's not offending him. You see, let me explain why by overcoming. The way the world is set up, the false doctrine in, in the world, they are made to be a stumbling block for you. It's a stumbling block. So you're supposed to have such a difficult time. Uh, you know, you're supposed to embrace false things to such a degree that when a preacher preaches truth, it offends you. Oh, this truth. Jesus Christ is God. Not a second God. Not a part of God. He is God in a human form. Isaiah said, I, did I read Isaiah? Isaiah said, a child is born, a son is given, his name shall be called wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father. He is God and father. If he can, you can't call him that if he doesn't deserve the titles. See? Those are offensive words. Them are fighting words. Them are going to leave your church words. That church got false doctrine in it, you know? So it's made, it's, you, the devil has made people's minds so that they're, they're offended by the doctrine of Christ. And there's one that God wants us to do. He wants us to preach a doctrine of Christ to purge out from the church what is of God. And I don't care. I don't care. If I, do, you really, do you guys really think I care if I stand before God in the end of only able to help 20 people to be saved? 
You think, I, you think I need masses to be? And God said, oh, Rob, you did a really, really good job. Rob, you didn't do anything. I did the whole thing myself. Whether it's 220, 200, or 2,000, it was always God. What, what glory do I get for? I mean, so if God makes a church of only 20 people, I'm quite happy with it. I'm, I am amazed at the amount of people that we have in church. So I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't really care if my doctrine offends you. That's why Christ preached one time. He said, does this offend you? Maybe I should change my doctrine to suit uh, the, the carnality of people or to suit the false doctrines that are there. Or maybe I should just preach it because in the end of time, if God has set me to be a watchman and I don't declare the truth and say, hey, this is wrong. If, if you came, <laughs> I remember there was, a, there was a man that was here. I didn't want to offend. I didn't want to offend. <laughs> this is what I mean? It was a friend of yours too, but I won't, I won't say his name. And he was here, but he was, um, he was divorced and he was getting a new wife and everything. Hey, my wife is my wife until death. Everybody say that. Your, your husband is your husband? Until? Your wife is your wife? Until death. And so, you know, that's, a, that's, a, that's really aggressive for people sometimes, you know. And so I didn't want to offend. And so I knew the man was sitting, I, I promise you he was sitting in church and, I, and, I, and, 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 and said, preach against adultery, and preach against divorce and remarriage, Robert. Say it now. And I'm like, but, 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 but. <laughs> Dashi, you know, you know, when you're acting God, you're sure because I don't want to offend it. And I heard these words so strongly in my spirit. Say it! Say it! I'm like, mm hmm. Divorce and re. <laughs> I made sure I said it. Clear myself. A little while later, he's dead. Guess what? I said it. I'm free. Thank you. I, I said it. He's sitting there. I said it. I'm free. What if I didn't say it? What if I didn't say he dropped dead? Whose fault is that? Because I'm supposed to tell him. Okay. So don't be afraid to preach the truth and preach the right, what is right. And if it offends you, it offends you. And I don't care. Why not? I'm apostolic. What does that have to do with anything? That's right. I don't care if I offend you. I can say whatever I want to say. However, I can be slow if I want to and take it easy because I know you're booby trapped and you'll you blow up. You have not overcome. Overcome means uh, it, it's offended you, but you still keep persevering. Overcome this. You're a Muslim. And I tell you about Jesus, and you're offended because the Muslim faith is supposed to be a stumbling block for you. So when you hear the truth about Jesus, you can't come to Christ because it's, it's too much for you. you. You trip over that. But you keep persevering. And you might even be angry at me. But you keep persevering until God, because it doesn't happen overnight, until God begins to open your eyes and open your mind. And then it's like, oh, I understand now. Oh, there you go. Pastor Robert, you were right the whole time. I told you so. <laughs> he said this, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. How? Because the Bible says, uh, where's, where's my sheep hear my voice? Find that fun one for me there. Shh. Because greater is he that is in you. You see, you cannot overcome false doctrine unless God is in you. What do you mean by God? God's word. By God, God's truth is in you. That's why Christ says, you cannot hear what I'm saying because you're not of me. I'm telling you the truth, you just can't get it, you don't appreciate it. But, 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 he, but my, my sister Sifa, even in your dream, your spirit knows, there are some songs that God gave us to worship with, that the church I go to, I can distinguish that my church, because there are certain songs that only they sing the spirit of God, of God, and they're beautiful. Hey guys, the songs that we make up are beautiful. They're very lovely worship songs. At Christmas time, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, maybe I'll do a worship in the slide, but maybe I'll do a worship in my home. Because I want to have a, 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 make a, we tried it last year. It was horrid. It was terrible. Alex, <laughs> Alex, uh, Alex, <clears throat> last year the worship was horrible. <clears throat> I mean, you know my beautiful voice. <clears throat> it was terrible. We still put it up online and people listen to it. Even Noah was listening to it. <laughs> And Kelvin's work. Like, no, it isn't a worship song at Christmas. If you want to do it properly this year, okay? When you have to learn the songs, we want to get the music right, get everything right, put the microphones right, and we want to have a worship time. If we don't do it at, at the slab, then we'll do it um, at my home. But we want to have a worship time 
where we just sing for a couple hours. It's just our songs, the favorites of our songs that we sing. This is our song. And it's just, I just want to call it our worship that we can listen to any time. As she said, there's something, it's an identifying marker. That's the song that God gave us to sing. We want to sing them for him. John 10 says what, Tashi? Yeah. He that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Yeah. So he gives the porter open and the sheep hear his voice. Yes. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Yes. And then it goes, and when he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him for they know his voice. And the sheep follow him for they know his voice. You see, if, you're, if you are of God, if you're of God, then you should know God's voice. You should know what is of God. God is, should be already working in it. In our world of falsehood and deception, if you cannot get something, hey guys, and you got to get it inside of your spirit, God has to put something in your spirit that makes you drive from, where are you driving from? From Baal Divis, and that makes you drive, and makes you drive from Mandra. Huh? Training bus to get here. It's brother, brother Kelvin. That makes you drive from. Can I say Geraldton? That makes you drive from Geraldton. To, to, to get to church on a regular basis. God has to put something in you that says, but, but brother Kelvin, there is a there is a church that's a lot closer to you. I spoke to um to, to Tamara and Derek. I said, guys, there's a church right next to you here. They said, no, no. We said, we went there. No, 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 no. No, we did not. We did not like that. You know? Right around the corner from um, uh, Brother Laughlin's sister Trish's house is a church called Nations. It's right there. Like, why don't you just go to Nations? Brother, why not? It's not what, what did you say? No truth. He would rather drive. <laughs> My Lord. Can I just thank God for a second? He would rather drive. Sister Trish, you would rather drive from Mandra to, to Balga to hear the truth than to go next door and hear a lie. May God bless you. <laughs> Can I just give God the glory for that? <laughs> to drive for so long, to just hear an old basketball player ramble along. Yeah, go ahead. What does it cost? It might be. How much to know you, Jesus? Lofman said, how much to know you, what will it cost? An hour of driving every Tuesday and Thursday. Huh? Has to be somebody coming to Mandra. How much to know you? Somebody else lives next door. Go and tell them to come over for they can't. Oh, they're busy, busy, busy. Someone driving from Mandra. How much? It's, it's too much. Uh, I give up my. I have to give up my Tuesday night basketball. My Tuesday night whatever. <laughs> I, that's not even my topic. I'm gonna get to my topic in a second here. You've overcome them. The spirit of Antichrist. Is, verses uh, verses five says, "They are of the world. Therefore, speak they of the world, and the world will hear them." So, if you're, of the law, if you're of the devil, people who are of the devil will speak doctrines from the devil and tell you lies from the devil, and you will hear them. If you're from darkness, they will preach darkness. You know, I, I said, I said um, something on, Tuesday, on, on Sunday. I said that the righteous runs into it and they are saved. And I said, the righteous is the, the, those who believe. I, I didn't qualify that, you know, but the Holy Ghost is so powerful because my, my Bible study group on Monday gives me a call and they ask me the question, Robert, because I, I said, if you have sinned, you have not died. If you have sinned, you die when you leave Christ. But the ways of sin is death. Isn't the ways of sin death? <laughs> Isn't it? Is that right? Shh, shh, shh. Yep, it's all good, all good. The wages of sin is death. But the Bible says, if any man sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the, Jesus Christ the, the righteous, who is the prop. 
propitiation for our sins. My message this weekend is called Grace Wasn't in the Garden. You get it? There was no grace in the garden. You sinned, you died. That was it. It was over. You're gone. You've lost everything. You're done. You're disinherited. You're finished. And I say, Satan, you wish. You wish you had that kind of world. Brother Regan, boom, dead. Like, uh, uh, there was no grace in the garden. Pastor Robbie can't preach like that. I have to preach like this. Why? Because sin abounds in our world. You must understand God's grace more now than you ever have. And I have to declare it loud and straight to everybody. <laughs> because we are, we are fighting against a raging devil who would just love to go, yep, yep, that's it. You, you know, you're in the Garden of Eden, yep, you've messed up, you better run away. No, I'm not running away from you. Get up, why, why, you, ever, you ever get beat up before? Okay, I did once. I, I, Brother Michael, you, you fight, you, you fight, you fight a bad man. You, 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 you lick in your face, man. You smack you down. Imagine, imagine that. I, I saw a boxer one time. He fight Mike Tyson. And Tyson hit him two or three times. The guy quits. You ever see that guy? He's like, no, leave me alone. That guy's like, don't do this, man. Don't do this. Stay in the ring. <laughs> Go back in here and fight Tyson. You ever, you ever see that? This, this uh, yeah, big boy, too, man. He walked away. He got, Tyson was too much for him, he, he walked away. Some people said the devil, no, don't walk with the devil, keep swinging, keep fighting. Got to get in your quick fight, don't, don't be quitting. So the message, grace, there was, grace wasn't in the garden. Was there grace in the garden? Was there, was there grace in the garden? What? But was there grace in the garden? Was there grace in the garden? Was there mercy in the garden? Was there, was there, was there forgiveness in the garden? There what? Right? In Gethsemane, we got it. In the garden of Gethsemane, he prayed for it, we got it. But, but there was no grace. There was no grace in the garden, guys. And, and by? Are you? And there was no grace. There, there was nothing to save him then. There's no, there's no restoring. They sinned, that was it, finished. This isn't, we're not in the Garden of Eden. Are you promoting sin? No, we need to understand about the grace of God. In our dispensation, we need to understand it. And so the young man called me and we spoke and everything. Went deep into the word and into the scripture and I'm gonna bring it. I, I said, you guys are, you know, like, you've inspired some of my messages. They're, don't know what the Spirit of God actually talks to them guys? I, I can hear my brain's going, do, 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 getting this, getting that. I'm like, okay, yeah, Rob, remember you explained that? Yeah, go back to the church on Sunday, explain them. Why is it? Why is it? Why is it that if you've sinned, you've not died? When the rage of sin is death. If you've sinned, you've not died. When do you die? Oh, y'all don't get it. Y'all don't get it. For it is in possible to renew them again if they what if they if they what if they fall away but he said if any man sins go find your advocates but if you walk away there's no grace don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about I know what I'm talking about. Don't walk away. You've wasted your, you've, you've, you've committed spiritual suicide for no reason. Men jump off buildings because they ran out of money. Two or three, they're going to get all the money back. They jump off. You didn't see it in, in the financial crisis. You didn't see that. Men jump off buildings in financial crisis because they, they, they lost their money. But you're in the position, you're going to get it all back. Don't worry. Anyway, we'll talk on Sunday. I don't always shout like this, so if you're new, sorry. <laughs> but I'm not coming back. He's kind of scary. He screams a lot. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a nice guy, trust me. Okay. Listen, here's my point I'm trying to make tonight. Verse 6. Listen carefully. We are. Who 
are the we? Who are, say it again. What is our church? <laughs> oh, I like that. The we is the apostles. They're dead, but they left doctrines, and we follow in the doctrines they left. We are apostolic, meaning that we follow the doctrines that were established by the apostles. We are of God. He that knoweth God, which means God's working in your life. The young man, young man came here, you know, but we, we could, you know, we can, we can see God's working in him. You know, you know he has, he's like, man, I just, I got to get something right with God. I got to fix this. I need to, I need to get back. I need to, you know, <laughs> uh, 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 Aaron was, uh, was amazing us, you know. Now, my brother, I don't mean to keep score or anything. But helping the people that God bring up, helping people that God bring across your path, 100. Chucking the track at a person at, at Willie's next door, zero. <laughs> you, you see, I told you, I, I don't, I'm experimenting and I'm seeing what works. If the people that God has brought into our lives and deposited in our lives, we tell them, um, Brother Michael told Brother Caleb. They, were, they came in, into, into Christ and they, and they talked about it. They shared. Eventually they came and, and uh, Yana came. They're married and they're connected like that. If we share the gospel with the people that God has connected us to, instead of going to some random person we've never known before and saying, come to my church, which they've been working hard too, eh? I'm just keep working. I want you to keep working. <laughs> and everybody, let him keep work. Tash, keep work. And I'm not saying don't. If he calls you, go. But find the people that God brings in your life. Tell them about, about God. Brother Regan was talking to someone who was going to detail about who you're talking about. And Brother Regan said, I'm going to invite him to church. I'm going to give him a, a gospel message. You give it to him? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yes, 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 yeah. Good. <laughs> And uh, I, I, I don't care who you are. You're my doctor. You know, you're my, you're my, uh, my, my guest. Whoever you are, I want to tell you about Jesus. Okay. Okay. The apostles had certain doctrines that were known as apostolic doctrines. They were the doctrine that the apostles taught. The apostles said, we are of God. No one else is. We are of God. You see, you can't have one group of God that tells you go in that direction and another group of God that tells you go in that direction. You have to believe that there is one group that is of God and those people are the ones you will trust. I trust the apostles. Therefore, I believe and, and I say we are apostolic because the, 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 the apostles have their, their names and foundations built upon them. Christ and chief cornerstone. Beloved, he says, we, we are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us. The apostles are now gone, but guess what? We have picked up. We have picked up where they left off. Because they, they established a church, but we, I know we're just a, uh, you know, a ragtag group, of, but we're keeping the church going. We're still declaring that the Holy Ghost is for today. We're still declaring that God is still God. We're still declaring that, that, there is, that there is only one God and Jesus Christ is the image of God. Where did I learn that Christ is the image of God? Who told me that? Who told me that Jesus Christ is God's image? The apostles told me that in the book of Colossians. All I am doing is I'm continuing what they have said because I believe that they are of God. He that heareth us. Now, you see... At the time when he said he that heareth us, he was not talking about Tertullian or Clement or, or Philo or, you know, or the, you know, the, the, the old patriarchs of, of, of Stoicism and, uh, and Platonism. He, he wasn't talking about any of those people. Who he was talking about was people that were established as apostles and those that were the, when, he, when he said they that hear it us is of God he's talking about those that are connected to them and understood them no one else is he it's a very strong scripture to have in your arsenal it's, it's found in uh, it's found in um, 
In, in, uh, in, in 1 John uh, uh, chapter 4, verse 6, we are of God. We are of God. We are of God. He that heareth us, he that heareth God, heareth us. He that is not of God, anyone, anyone that I, Pastor Robert, preach the gospel that the apostles preached to, if I preach to them the gospel that they preach exactly as how they preach it, if I say to them, baptism is for a death with Christ and a burial with Christ and a resurrection with Christ. If the apostles have said that in, in the book of Romans, and I repeat that, and they can't hear me, understand me, don't like me, want to kill me, you're not of God. Why is that? Because he that heareth me, because the apostles aren't here anymore. And, and Paul said, follow me. And he's fallen out the way, so I'm, I'm left leading. You understand that? I was following the apostles, then they fell out the way. They died, so it leaves me in the lead. One day, I'll drop dead. Like a relay race. Like a relay race. I like that, Tammy. They ran, they ran, they ran. They can't run forever. They ran over and reached. Don't drop the baton now. Hey, don't drop it. You ever know? seen races when they drop the baton? <laughs> If, 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 if you drop it, you better go back and pick it up. <laughs> and then and yeah, here I am running. And, I'm, and guys, I'm doing my best. I'm teaching. Brother Jordan, put your hand back. Here it comes, Brother Jordan. I'm going to lick you with the baton. You get the baton, and you put it out. You start to run fast. And you take off running. And you run as fast as you can. Teach everybody, show everybody, give everybody the truth. And then one day, you're going to come, you can start slowing down, and, and then you're going to reach the baton and give it to somebody else. But it, that's been going on for a very long time now. Before, be, be, when I don't even know it's been going on. If I was born, it was going on. That's truth. What truth? He that heareth the apostles must know God. He says, he says again, I'm going to keep on fish on in, um, in, in, in John. Um... Um, Tammy, where the one you did? I think I've got the Holy Ghost. Okay, okay, hang on for a second. He says this. I like how he says this. He says, We're of God, he that knoweth God heareth us, he that is not of God heareth us not. And hereby know you the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. If you don't listen to me when I tell you, I'm bold now, if you can't hear what I'm saying and can't believe what I'm saying, the spirit of error has got some brimstone stuck in your ears. You need to see Sister Monica. She's an ear specialist. She'll get the brimstone out your ears. <laughs> Wait, I call you an earologist, what are you, sister? I... That's ghetto, that's ghetto talk, man. Earologist, you know? My, <laughs> huh? my, uh, my friend Molly called the optometrist the eye guy. <laughs> Doesn't that just work, the eye guy? I mean, why the fancy titles, you know? Just see, yeah, I'm gonna go see the eye guy. Forget the optometrist, right? The eye guy. Anyway. Aerologist? Audiologist, of course. <laughs> so we have an audiologist over here. If, if, you, if, you, if you can't hear me, go talk to Monica. See if Monica can un unblock it out of your ears. You know? Sister Monica, I don't know. You're an audiologist. I learned something from you. I'm trying to implement in preaching. I haven't thought about it, but tell me if it works, okay? If your ear is stuck of earwax and you can't hear properly, don't answer. Do you get Q-tips and go like this? No. You know that? I didn't know that. <laughs> okay, so from a professional audiologist, okay? When people can't hear you, don't keep ramming it in, okay? Hey? Remove what's blocking them. Is that a good metaphor? Yeah, she's happy, okay? 
go in the ear, have a little bit of an of a incision and say, I'm there again, and just and scope out what's blocking the ears. Find out where the false doctrine is. Show them why the doctrine is wrong. So we, and then we sat down with young Aaron here. We said, Aaron, I want you, Aaron, to turn, um, go to Encyclopedia Britannica and see what they're saying here. When you're baptized in the Father and the Holy Ghost, you're being baptized in Trinity. There is no Trinity. Okay. Um, we're not saying it. We're saying that the encyclopedia says it's, it's it, the, the, he said, the encyclopedia actually says the only baptism that there was was in Jesus' name. They weren't back. In the, so we're not, you know, I like doing that. So all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, I'm hearing a lot better now. He that is he the spirit of truth or the spirit of error. And here's an opinion. I'm going to give you an opinion. I like Paul's opinion of himself in 1 Corinthians 7 40. 40. Big. First Corinthians 7 verse is 40. The last verse. I love how he says this. Let's talk about opinion again. We're going to Luke, we're going to Luke 10 16 after this. 7 verses 40. The very last verse. We talked we talk about opinion last time, right? How is doctrine formed? It's, 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 it's begins as opinion. And when you get two or three witnesses, it becomes doctrine. When it, when it can be validated, Old Testament, New Testament, number of times, it, it's a doctrine. Okay. The wife is bound, I'm going to verse 30. The wife is bound by the law. Um, yeah, Luke 7, 30, 39, first, yep, sorry. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead, she's a fatmada. If you get, a, if you get a, a telephone call one day and says your husband has passed away, you're free. I, I, I told the guys to take a, take a ticket and, all right, it'll be a long line of people. <laughs> Hey, CVs, yeah. Uh, pass it by John Jack. You say, John Jack, what do you think? What do you think, buddy? You have to give me some clarity here. Jack, no, I don't like that. I don't like the look of that one, Rob. I don't like the look of that one. But until you hear that news, you're bound under not just the Old Testament law, but the New Testament. For in the New Testament, Christ says that if you divorce and remarry, then you're committing adultery, okay? The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. And if her husband is dead, she's at liberty to be married to whom she wants only in the uh, uh, what, what did the Bible say? Only in the Lord. You're supposed to marry somebody who is of the same faith. Okay. But he said, but she is happier, she is happier if she shall abide. Just a single. And he says, after my judgment, it's my opinion. After my judgment, Sister, Sister Charmaine, you're just happy? Are you happy? Pretty happy? Yeah? We're not going to run and get married down the road? If, you sure? All right, me neither. I'm going to say, Tammy's going. I'm, I'm, I'm a single man. Just working for the Lord, you know? It is, I will. Yeah. He says here, um, she's at liberty to be married to him, but, but she's happier. So all you, all you single ladies over there, don't be, don't be too unhappy, okay? Because according to Paul, you should be happier. <laughs> Naomi? <laughs> Are you happier? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we know Benny's happier. We don't even ask Benny if he's happier. <laughs> oh, Benny, Benny, Benny. I love I love Benny. Benny's very happy. Leave Benny alone. And he's like, no, I am fulfilling first Corinthians. <laughs> yeah, I am very happy. I hang out with your kids and then I give them back. <laughs> Take him home. She is happier if she so abide. After my judgment. And, and then he says, I love it. And then he says, I think. What? That I have the spirit. I think. I'm not, I'm not saying I do. I just, I think I do. You figure out whether I do or not. I like that. He is so facetious, isn't he? Oh, you think you're smarter than me? That's fine. I think I have the Holy Ghost. I don't know. Maybe I don't. You, you can correct me if I don't. I like that. 
He's very confronting when he says that because he knows he got the Holy Ghost. He knows, he's seen the power that he's de demonstrated. He said, but, I, but he's showing you, I, this is my opinion. You need to reach your own opinion about me. My opinion of myself is, I think I got the Holy Ghost. I think, maybe. Per adventure, I have the Spirit of God. <laughs> I think I might be able to come up with some ideas or some things which are true and if you apply them to your life they can make your life better. I think that maybe if you go in the direction that the Spirit tells you to go in it, it, it'll work out well. And you know something? I, 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 honestly, let me, let me tell you something. I wish that every counsel that I gave ended up just perfect. Everything was just wonderful. Typically it does, but sometimes some councils are just like, yeah, they're tough to hear, you know, but you got to give them anyway. And then, then once I give them, guess what? You're free. We're not, are we a cult? You can do whatever you want to do. You're free. Okay. Let's go to Luke chapter 10. Because of my opinion. Oh, yes, brother. Read for me out loud. Yes. Mm, mm. It, is, it is the counsel of God. They're declaring that. They see, people might think that, well, God can talk to other people as well. Doesn't have to be you guys alone. Hey, apostolics! <laughs> you ever hear people say, well, maybe you guys aren't the only ones? Well, until you show me somebody that preaches what I preach in Perth here, guess what? I'm the only one. And he that heareth me, heareth him that sent me. And in some cities you go to, there are no churches there. They'll be very happy. Hey guys, it's okay to say we are the ones. Not us as in this little group here. The church is universal, it's, it's huge. But Natasha, we have the truth. Is that okay with you? Anybody else got it? Go check the Baptists, they ain't got it. Go check your witnesses, they don't have it. Eh? Go check, go check the other churches, they don't have it. All good? Okay. They, they ain't got it. Who has the truth? Yeah. Look around, and you won't find many preachers like me. <laughs> Brother Calvin has. No, I mean, yo, look him around. Not anymore? You, you quit looking? <laughs> oh! Oh, I like that. Speak it, sister! I like her. <laughs> Brother Calvin looking around. I didn't, I didn't look. I wasn't looking. Yeah, you were. You were always looking. Yeah. God didn't Yeah. was Yeah. They're all dead. They're all dead. You know why? Because they don't hear us. Sister Martha, he brought you to a thousand churches. They were not hearing me. I want to know, I want to know who preaches a Godhead like me. If you don't preach a Godhead like me, you ain't preaching a Godhead. If you're preaching a Godhead where, Christ, where God is a, is, a, is, a, is a little man off to the side there, you ain't not teaching it. If you're preaching like me, and you guys know how I preach, I'm going to go to right now, I preach it properly. And if you don't preach it like me, you're not preaching it properly. You need to come, you need to come learn. Pastor, you need to come sit down and let me teach you. The proper God, you can go back and tell your people. Then tell them that Christ did not exist in the beginning. He was in God's mind. I don't care how many PhDs you have. You should not make that mistake. Brother Jordan, tell somebody. Brother Jordan, if they don't hear you, get a little arrogance. Can you get a little arrogance? It's okay. Paul was arrogant. The Holy Ghost makes you, and I, I think the spirit of truth is in us. I think it is. I'm not sure. <laughs> Tashi, maybe the spirit of truth is in us. May, I, what lie have I told you guys here? I'm teaching you guys things that you know, I've never heard anybody preach before. <laughs> so, 
Here is what we have to do as apostolics. As apostolics, we have to um, get a little bold sometimes. And I'm not always that bold, but I feel like being bold tonight. I'm being bold because the apostles were bold. And because the apostles were bold, and, and I'm following what they're teaching, and I'm taking what they have taught, and I'm explaining it using their teaching. I'm showing you that, I, like, no one has ever taught me. I never heard a pastor in all the times I've been church say that Christ is the image and that Christ is never referred to as being in the image. I've never heard a pastor say that. I have never heard a pastor specify those two little words, is and in, and make a doctrine out of that. But I did, by the Holy Ghost, and I think I have the Holy Ghost, not sure. Say it again? Yes, stand up there, let me see your t-shirt. What your t-shirt said? Oh man, I, I said we are in the image. Remember that day I was preaching it? I was right here. We are in the image of the one who is the image of the one who has the image. I've never heard a pastor that in my life. That's the apostolic truth right there. We are in the image of the one who is the image of the one who has the image. And I made a man mad in the grocery store. He didn't come near me. You, you thought I had body odor bad or something. I had my, my t-shirt on and I made him, I made sure he read it. <laughs> Well, the wrinkle anyway. <laughs> I hope <laughs> that man was like, he, "Man, I promise you, man." He put his he put his thing on the cash register and then stepped off like that. You know, he put his stuff there, just stepped off, man. Didn't want to get near me. I'm like, come on, you guys, all right, go a little closer. God ain't gonna hurt you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then she came by me, she was like, that's a very good one you put in your mind. It makes me think twice. Is that, she said that, did she? Yeah. Make some more. Brother Jordan, the new couple that came to church on Sunday, they need two of those t-shirts. <laughs> All right? You know, I'll mean, just say it here. Uh, if you have kids that want shirts, let me know, and then I can organize them. Organize them? All right. When are you, you going to get another batch in? Because they're good, they're nice and stretchy. And we like, we like those, so let me know. I, got, I go organize two more, okay? Just putting out a little order. Just go and stamp them in the back, you know. <laughs> Board dad's pretty impressed. Anyway, I, I, I'll preach on. Apostolic doctrine. Apostolic. And then the other one, the cross on it, has all of the verses and everything like that. Man, you, it's, uh, that's what we're wearing. We're wearing what the apostles taught in our back, and we're not ashamed. And nobody else preaches that except us. And he who is of God will hear us. And if you're not of God, you will not hear us. You'll argue back. Because you're not, of, you're not of God. So here what Christ says. Let's read from verses 10. 10.10. 10, Luke 10.10. 10. And Lord, we need more power. Everybody say, Lord, Lord we need, need what? More power. But he's never failed us. We need more power, but we have a church in Philadelphia. He says, you have a little, you have a little power, but you've not denied my name. <laughs> but, I, but into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you not. Pastor Roberts. When you go and tell somebody you preach the gospel and they don't receive you, don't get all offended because they don't. It's okay. God already prepared you for that. Go your ways into the streets of the same and say, even the very dust of your city which cleaveth unto us, the same us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be sure of this, that the kingdom of God is nigh, is come unto you. When I come to the pulpit and I preach the Godhead and I tell that Jesus Christ is God and you don't like it, it offends you and you walk out, good luck. I don't care. I am, because if you're of God, you would say, hmm, he's glorifying, some should say, you know what, he's glorifying Jesus. Let me hear about this. But how can I be glorifying Jesus and you get up and walk out? What's wrong with you? <laughs> That's my great delight. Haven't God prepared your heart? <sighs> but I say unto you that it shall be more 
intolerable in that day for Sodom and for that city than for that city. For, from Sodom? More tolerable than Sodom? Yeah. Because Sodom did not preach Jesus. Woe unto thee, Shazarin. Woe unto thee, Bethsheba. Bethsheba. For if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, which have been done in you, they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable. I'm done now. It shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. <laughs> Woe to the man who heard me preach in this gospel and got offended by it and walked away. Not because I did. Whose girlfriend did I teeth? Whose woman did I take? What sin? My sister, I'm the chief of sinners. What sin are you condemning me of? Sister, who walked out of here because of my transgression? None. They walked out of here because of the doctrines. Bye. They didn't get the doctrines. Or I worship God too loud. Bye. You tell me how to worship. I'm feeling bold. I determine how loud I worship. I determine my worship. Amen. You want to worship God in a dead church? Go. In this church, we worship God in spirit and in truth, and it gets a little noisy sometimes. And heaven is a, is, is a very noisy place. We're sorry, but that's who we are. We're not ashamed. And like I said, if at the end of it all, I got 20 people to minister to, that's all God gave me. That's what Christ said. The ones that he gave me, they might have kept. It's okay. I, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that Capernaum which are exalted to heaven shall be thrust down to hell and thou kingdom city and thou Bethel and thou Hillsong am I wrong? and thou big mega church and thou big river view, and thou, yeah, I know, I know. And thou victory life, because if I went and told them the truth about Christ, they would shut me down and, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a, what am I? Oh, you're a, a, a heretic. Okay. But I'm going back to John again. Verses 16. He that heareth you, heareth me that I'm confident in. I am confident in the fact that the doctrines that God has given to the apostolic church are coming from the apostles and the apostles got them from Jesus. I am a hundred and I am, I, I will say it anywhere and if you don't get it, get your brimstone out, clean out your ears, go see Sister Monica and, and come back and because I'm not changing it to suit you. I'm not modifying it to suit you. It is what it is. Christ is the image. We are in the image of the one who is the image of the one who has no image. We don't change that. And he's there from the beginning. He is God. And in fact, if you really want to know, this scripture is also saying that Christ is God because he is the one that we are hearing. He that heareth us, heareth God. But Christ said, he that heareth you, heareth me. Who are you? I'm God. Am I, have I just took us some brimstone? Who had brimstone? Couldn't you hear that? Could you see the Godhead in that? Yes. It's declaring the Godhead. Because when we're, when we're hearing the apostles, we're hearing the apostles because the apostles heard Christ. When did the apostles, when, when did the apostles ever, ever heard God? When did they hear God? When did, who did Moses hear? Moses can say, I heard God. He went up to the mountain and the mountain trembled and it was full of smoke. Moses heard God. Am I right or wrong? Well, the apostles heard who? And, who, and, and they preach Christ. And yet when they preach Christ, they said, he that heareth us heareth God. As heard from God. And they're hearing the words of God. Well, where did you get the words from? From Christ. Did you get it from God? No. All, Paul, all that God ever said to Paul was, why, in fact, when he did speak to God, what did God tell him? What it was well, even better. Hey, when they were baptizing and the voice came and said, Master, should we, you know, should we make three tabernacles? One for you, one for life, one for the God said, No, no, no. God said, Hear him. 
And God who at sundry time and in diverse manners takes in time past unto the fathers by the prophet after in these last day spoken unto us by his image. Am I right or wrong? Oh, don't stop me now. You see what I'm saying? So they're actually picking up the apostolic doctrine in that. And they're, and they're actually declaring that if you hear us, you're actually hearing from God. You must know God. God is working in you because he has put his word. You see? So what happens is Christ says, you can't hear me because my word is not in you. You ever, you ever, you ever read that? Am I right or wrong? But, but how, can, how can my, you, I've never heard you preach before, how can you hear? Because long before I met Aaron, God was talking to him through Victor, or God was talking to him in a dream. A lot of people before I meet them, God already talking to them. So when I meet them, they, 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 they quickly identify. But if God ain't talking to you, you don't know God, God I tell you something, it bugs you. I like people who say, you know what, I just, I always knew he was God, but I couldn't explain how. I'm done, I'm done. He that heareth you heareth God. And he that and he that and he that <laughs> he that heareth you heareth the one who is the image. And he that despiseth you despiseth the one who is the image. And he that despiseth the one who is the image despiseth God. Say it again? despises him that sent me. Who sent him? God. You're despising God. Do you understand the mystery? Brimstone. The Holy Ghost makes things easy to understand. And can Christ said, when the Spirit has come, he shall declare me unto you. So as you're reading your Bible, the Spirit is constantly revealing Jesus. Everywhere. You just see Christ. Are we Jesus only? We, we can't be Jesus only because he is the image of the one who we're acknowledging there is one who has no image we're acknowledging there is one who has no image and he is the image for the one who has it so we can't be Jesus only there was only Jesus open our eyes Lord Jesus we want to see Jesus ah we want to reach out and touch you oh yes and say that we love you oh open our ears lord and help us to listen to you let's open our eyes lord i say we want to see jesus you guys cool myself oh yes please open our eyes hey, we want to see jesus we want to see you lord we want to reach out because we can't see god we want to Hallelujah, Lord, please open our Remove the blockage, Lord, and help us to listen. Oh, oh, oh. open our eyes, Lord. We want to see And you sang it so beautifully, that is your prayer. And the church said, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen.